Um, we'll jump to Gene then. Gene, are you there? Can you hear me okay? Hey. Yes. Hi, this is Gene. How are you doing? Very oh. good. Um, I got a quick question. I um, I don't know if it's quick. So I send uh, uh, this case to your tech tech support. Yes, sir. I did get a response. Uh, I'm reading through it, but I just kind of wanted to see if I can ask you a question directly. Sure, um, absolutely. You was about the fire pump. Like when you once. Uh, so my my question was this: like uh, uh, when you do a system, sprinkler system demand without the pump, mm -hmm. you get uh, let's say 60 psi, um, and that's what. Um, so you get about 60 psi uh, sta pressure, right? Requirement. Once you add the fire pump. Uh, at least the the graph shows like a little bit less than 60. It shows like 56. But if, but if I go to a node analysis tab, it still shows like negative 66, which is consistent when uh, with even without the pump. Okay. I don't know if you can follow what I'm saying or. Yeah. So the program is going to populate pressure demand at the water supply ball, and that's going to remain constant. But when you select the pump. If you've got a pump in place and you're calculating through the fire pump, when you select the pump graph, the program is going to populate the demand that's required at the pump, not necessarily uh -huh. the demand at the water source. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you have a pump, like there's one BOR, it gives you like one graph. The other one says uh, pump at node, mm -hmm. right? And then you have supply at node. A supply at node never made sense to me because it just goes down, uh, but it shows negative 66, for example. Mm -hmm. But when I switch to a pump at node, yeah, it, sh it shows like 56. So the difference there is the, the pressure requirement at the pump versus the pressure requirement at the water source. So the pressure requirement at the water source, that's accounting for the, the pressure boost that the, the, the pump is outputting. Mm -hmm. But the pressure requirement at the pump, that's not necessarily accounting for the friction loss um, and or elevation loss from the pump back to the water source. Okay, I, I, guess, I guess that makes sense. So, so essentially, when, you, when I select, like in, if I'm in a system demand graph and mm -hmm. I select pump at node, it gives me the pressure at the pump. Correct. Not at the, not at the system. Uh, right. Not at the water source, that is correct. Not at, not at the water source. All right. I guess I could uh, go with that. It was just like when I was, because uh, I was doing the screenshots and I was providing them as my, you know, sort of like uh, showing the calc. Mm -hmm. It was showing like 56, but I was like, why is it 56? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So the, yeah. the, right. So the graph, the graphs um, will populate the system pressure demand at that point. So where the program is, is generating the graph at that point. That's that's the data. It's pulling the uh, the required pressure and flow data from that point within the piping network. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to print out the graph report at the pump, it, it would it would show the same thing on the graph, but in the summary below the graph, it would populate the total required pressure demand at the supply. So it, it would indicate both. The graph would indicate the pressure requirement at the pump, and then the summary below would, would duplicate that information as well as show you the pressure demand at the source. But that's uh, that's the thing. So when I when I did that, let me uh, just see that. Um. Hey Tom, I saw you jumped back in. We'll uh, we'll circle back to you after we're we're done with Gene here. Okay. All right. Sorry, just uh, I'm actually pulling up that uh, graph. Okay. Yeah, on the bottom it says, it says available pressure at the time of the pump 64, and then it says system demand 56. Like that's is what you were talking about, like below the graph when you actually print print the graph. Yes. So that um, can, can you share your screen so I can take a look at the same report you're looking at? Yeah, I wonder how I can do that. Let's see. Uh, this is my first time. I've never uh, used this before. Understood. No worries. So in the meeting window, along the bottom, um, along the bottom of the screen, you should have a control bar that has a mute, hang up, share your, um, a couple of buttons in the middle. Let me do this. 
Uh, let me share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about here. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen now, Gene. Yeah, I can see it. So you you should have these three buttons along the bottom of your screen. On the far yeah. right here, it'll say on your on your end, um, it'll say trainer is presenting or something right, similar to that. Saying. Yeah. If you click on that, then it'll it'll ask you if you want to share your entire screen. Um, click on entire screen and then select whatever screen you've got your auto sprink or or wherever you, whatever screen you're viewing the report on. Okay. And then it'll ask if you want to take over presenting. Just hit OK. All right. Sounds good. I'm going to share. Oh. Full screen. Perfect. I'm not sure if you can see the screen. Yes, sir. I can. Do you see the graph? I do. Yeah, so you see where it says available pressure, 64, system demand, 56. Yes, sir. So there's a, there's a bit of a safety factor at the fire pump here. Um, so the program is basically saying that you've got 64 PSI available at the fire pump, and your system requires 56 PSI at the fire mm -hmm. pump. Um, this is this is an older version of Auto Spring. This year on twelve, I yeah, believe in twenty nineteen, and I could be wrong, but I feel like in twenty nineteen, it the program populates the total demand as well as the demand at this point. So mm -hmm. in the version that you're on, the program is only populating the demand at this point. Yeah, if I'm, you were I'm actually with Jensen Hughes, and we do have a, another version that the company uses, but this is my own. But uh, I got you. Like, Understood. Um, because I, I can show you what, what it looks like on the, so here's basic setup, right? Yes, sir. And then if I shut off this pump and I let it go through the bypass, which is always open, I have it open. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, yeah, we, you might have a valve closed on the bypass. Yeah, one is closed. <laughs> so this is what I get. See, see how 386 at 64 or 63.9. Yes, so that's sir. my demand. Mm -hmm. And that's, you're saying this is the, the system demand at the, well, I guess, well, at you're saying at the source, right? Correct. So that would be 121, right? So it would be basically right there. That's my source. But when I, when I activate the pump, Hydraulic analysis, so you get all this. Now it says negative 60, 66. Yes, sir. But if I switch to a uh, pump at node, it gives me like 56, which is now, I guess we discussed that it's at the pump. Yeah. So the system demand at the discharge side of your pump uh, is 56 PSI. The pump is going to knock that pressure down based on your curve that you've established. So at this flow rate, it looks like your pump is putting out uh, 120 PSI or something. So at this point in the hydraulic sequence, the, the program is going to take 56 and it's going to knock 120 PSI off. So now you're, that's where you're getting this negative pressure value and it continues from that point back to the source. Yeah, it's kind of funky, so it's negative 60. Right there. Yes, sir. Right. So, so, by, so essentially, all right, I'll go with that. I'm just gonna gonna consider that 56 is at the pump. Yes, sir. That is correct. Okay. All right. And th and that seems correct, right, to you? Like that's how it should be. Yes, sir. And if you were to uh, if you were to close out of this dialogue and you um, were to preview your hydraulic analysis report, it might make it a little mm -hmm. bit clearer. So if you right click on your remote area. Oh, yep, that's, this works too. Hydraulic reports, perfect. And then click on the hydraulic analysis. No, no, uh, let's see hydraulic analysis, yep. Yep, and then preview that. So this populates the hydraulic sequence, and you'll see, so you're starting out with 7 PSI, and that accumulates until you get to the pump between uh, right at node 13. 56.132, 
is what's required at the pump. And the pump uh, is knocking that pressure down to negative 74 PSI based on the points, the curve that you've established in the properties of that fire pump. And then from right. there, it continues the sequence back to your water supply, which results in the negative 66 required PSI. Okay. Okay. All right. I get it. So what I like to do sometimes when, I'm, when things aren't looking quite right, especially when I'm, you know, you know, doing like exactly what you're doing, where I'm, I'm checking, you know, if a pump is sized appropriately, I'll turn it on, shut it off, calc through the bypass. I'll leave this um, preview open. And then I'll shut the pump off, count through the bypass, preview that analysis, and then I can compare two analyses side by side to see exactly what's going on and follow the same sequence through the same piping network. It'll be a little bit different because you're calculating through the bypass versus down through the, the fire pump itself. But um, that that piping arrangement, the two O's and Y's and the check versus the, uh, the fittings and the pipe um, down mm -hmm. through the pump is going to be pretty close to the same. The only major difference is going to be the pressure um, boost of the pump itself. Okay. But that's the approach I like to take is I'll compare two different analysis reports based on changes that I've made to the system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate you know. You got it.